Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. We have terrible bad news for you today. Uh, Four Marines are dead. And they will not identify the gunman. They're calling it domestic terrorism. That's all they will leak at this point. Tennessee, two Marine recruiting stations attacked by a so-called gunman. Four Marines dead. They will not identify the shooter. They're calling it domestic terrorism. How's that work coming for you, Jed Johnson? How's your Department of Homeland Security today, Jed Johnson? And what about you and the FBI? Are you proud of yourself today? How about you and all the intelligence agencies? The country is falling apart. You're focused on the wrong enemies. That's all I want to say at this time. And now we open uh, the minute we have uh, any identification of the shooter. Any identification whatsoever. White, black, pink, yellow, green. I don't care what. We will let you know. But the, uh, the, the spokesmouths are not identifying the shooter. Here's a tragedy like this. Two military facilities under assault in Tennessee, four Marines dead, and the most they will tell us, it's an act of domestic terrorism. Where is Jed Johnson? The same de Department of Homeland Security, Jed Johnson. How do you feel about your homeland and your security today with that doofus in charge? How do you feel about your homeland and security today with your FBI in charge? Looking uh, on the lookout with an all-points bulletin for any white male with a cross who's come back from Iraq or Afghanistan. That's who they're focused on under this war against America by your president who has committed an act of treason with Iran. Make no mistake about it. It's an act of treason. And if we had a legitimate government, the man would be indicted for treason. Make no mistake about it, because if you look at the details of the deal he signed with the Muslim haters who run Iran, you're going to be shocked to learn things today that you will never believe could happen in your lifetime. Never. Never believe what I'm about to disclose to you. Things in the deal that will make even the most devout Democrat shake in his boots and say this can't be true. You wait and see. It'll all come out. The phone number here is 855-400-7282. 855-400-7282. This is the Savage Nation, the one and only. Again, domestic terrorism at recruiting centers. By the way, this is the act of ISIS in the Middle East. They usually attack recruiting stations. I don't know who the shooter was. They're calling it domestic terrorism. I don't know who the race of the shooter was. No idea. But I can tell you this, whatever it is, it means that we are now as porous as Swiss cheese under this administration, who is focusing not on our real enemies. They're flooding enemies in as fast as they can. They call it diversity. Every city, every state, boasting about how diversity is increasing and the white population is decreasing. You won't believe it. I'll play it for you. They consider that a victory. That's part of the progressive Islamist takeover of America, which I describe in a book that's not going to be out until October, but I don't understand how right I can be. It's called Government Zero. It's on Amazon. You won't believe it. Government Zero, the conspiracy of the progressive Islamist Islamic takeover of America. Wait until you see and wait until you hear what they're doing to us. And in order to understand how they're getting away with it, I want to start with a soundbite from the President of the United States. Listen to what he says about anyone who tries to warn you about what's going on in clip nine. That's our tradition. It's not Democratic or Republican. It is the American tradition. And we forget that sometimes because we're so caught up in our day-to-day -day politics. And we listen to a bunch of hooey on TV or talk radio that doesn't really tell the truth about what's going on. You hear him lying, the stand-up comedian, someone only Bill Maher could believe, a stoner on Sunset Boulevard would believe this crap, a bunch of hooey that you hear on television and talk radio, talk radio. Why don't you just ban the press and get it over with? Just ban the press. Ban anyone who doesn't lick your boots, you monster, you. You American-hating monster, you. 
Domestic violence, huh? Well, it gets better. Now, I told you that I would disclose to you the sellout and the treason he committed with Iran, so I may as well do it right off the bat so you don't think I'm one of those right-wing crazies of the type that dares ask the treasonous inhabitant of the White House a real question. One reporter had the guts. One reporter had the guts to stand up to this fraud. And he attacked him, and the other vermin in the media jumped on him. Oh, it was disrespectful to the president. How dare you ask a loaded question? No, don't ask him any questions. Just let him do his act. Remember when Ronald Reagan was president? Remember the kind of questions they would throw at him? Remember that loudmouth with the wig, whose name I forgot? Mr. President! Remember he screamed out, Mr. President? I don't remember his name. He's gone from the media. I don't know where he is. Probably living in Boca Raton. Don't know. Mr. President! Every loaded question imaginable. But Reagan could handle it because he really didn't have anything to hide. This one has everything to hide. This sneak in the White House has everything to hide. So let's go right to the facts and the hooey, as the president calls it. Here's some hooey for you today on the Savage Nation. Here's some hooey from talk radio. Here's some of the hooey. Here's his loser, Susan Rice, disclosing a part of the deal that should make your hair stand up. I'll let her speak, and then I will comment in clip seven. The uh, IAEA, which is a highly respected international organization, will field an international team of inspectors, uh, and those inspectors will, in all likelihood, come from IAEA member states, most of whom have diplomatic relations with Iran. We, of course, are a rare exception. No Americans will be part of the IAEA inspection team. They're not going to be Stop. independent Americans. Did you hear what she just said? Obama signed a deal with Iran, a treaty in essence, permitting them to develop a nuclear weapon. And we are not even part of the inspection team. Instead, it's the Muslim nations that are Iran's friends that will inspect the facilities. If this is not treason, ladies and gentlemen of the savage nation, tell me what is. I'll calm it down. I'll slow her down. Because this truck's running too fast down Highway 80. This truck is just about to race out of control over a cliff if I don't control myself. I'll slow her down. I'd like to know if you believe that that's treasonous. He signs a deal with the terrorist state of Iran, which has killed many of our troops, which funds proxy armies around the world, which has planted terrorists in the United States of America in the form of Hezbollah. And in this treaty... He's, we learned today in that little speech by Susan Rice that we have no inspectors that will be permitted in Iran. Now we have the shooting today on this, these two recruiting bases in Tennessee. Now you ask yourself why the Marines were shot down like sheep. You want to hear the answer? Because they were disarmed. Did you know that your troops are disarmed on military bases across America? Do you know who disarmed them? This is unheard of. But it's been going on since President Bill Clinton. The Democrats took away the weapons of all of our armed service members on base, which is how the Fort Hood massacre occurred when the Muslim major, Nidal Hassan, who has still not been executed, Nidal Hassan is enjoying a fat cell with halal meals and psychiatric care, dental care, medical care, every kind of care in the world. And Nidal Hassan hasn't been executed. Why not? Timothy McVeigh was executed within two years of that horrible crime in Oklahoma City. How is that possible? Why is Obama keeping the Muslim major who committed the Fort Hood massacre alive? Why has he not been executed for that crime? Ask yourself the question, and unless you're Robert De Niro, you'll get the answer. Unless you're one of the brainwashed, psychopathic liberals who, for whom the bell will never toll. The bell will never toll. The bell will never ring in their head. Their brains are stuffed with straw. They are the straw men of our time. T.S. Eliot wrote about the straw man. They are the straw men. Hollywood, the news media, the straw men of our time. The bell cannot ring in their head. No bell can ever go off in their head. They can never put two and two together. So we have the shootings now. We learn that the deal with Iran is such uh, that they got everything and we got nothing. Obama gave away the store, which is what he was put in office to do, by the way. And we learned today that no Americans will be part of the IAEA inspection teams. We also learned that the president's attacking the hooey of talk radio. Well, if, if it's hooey, 
that I am presenting on the air right now, how do you explain that it's Susan Rice appointed by the president himself who says that America will not be part of the IAEA inspection teams? Is that also hooey, Mr. Obama? And on that note, I'll take a quick break and take your calls at 855-407-282. Don't go away yet. We are still waiting to find out who the suspect is. The useless stooges in the intelligence business refuse to disclose who did the shooting. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and other intelligence services refused to release the identity of the murderer who executed four Marines at two facilities in Tennessee. That's the nation you live in, the police state. The police state where the government media complex keeps you in the dark. And while this goes on, the progressive Islamist takeover of America continues at a very rapid pace. This comes two days after Obama capitulated to the Hitlers of Iran, the Hitlers in a headscarf. Two days after they got the right to develop a nuclear bomb. Two days after we agreed to every one of their terms. Two days after they agreed to do nothing. Two days after America showed itself to be supine on the world stage. A once proud nation, now broken by a man who has no limit to his obsession with his obsession to undermine the nation itself. Now, if you think this is hooey, you're part of the majority of progressives, the type who watch Bill Maher, the type who believe the evening news, the type who believe John McCain. That's the type you are. You're the moderate type. You don't want loud voices. You want everything to be done quietly. Well, you know what quiet gets you, don't you? You know what the meek shall inherit, don't you? I know many of you have been brought up to believe the meek shall inherit the earth. You know what they'll inherit? I can't tell you what the meek shall inherit because it's a word that can't be used on talk radio. This is a family show. Obama's not meek at all. He's on the war path against America. He's on a fast track right now to gut virtually everything that's left. Now you say, what does this have to do with four Marines killed in Tennessee? And I just love the Stooges on Fox News. I love that fraud of a man sitting there with that ugly gray suit saying, look at the headline, four Marines and shooter. They include the shooter in all of the death statistics now as though their lives count. Don't you love it? When a suicide bomber would blow up 50 people in Israel, say 51 people died, including the suicide bomber. Who started including... These, uh, these, these crazy people in the death count, why did they equate their lives with the ones they killed? That's liberalism, the mental disorder. 855 By the way, on the day that this occurred, and we still don't know who the shooter was, by the way, your president, your progressive Islamist president, is in a prison in Oklahoma catering to prisoners, talking about reducing prison sentences. How's that for timing? Mr. Podesta, how is that for timing, Mr. Podesta? Is that, is that good timing? What timing you have, Podesta? Whoever it is is running his, I don't know who's running his, his life now. Oh, Podesta's working for her. Uh, Podesta's working for her. Unbelievable to me how this goes on, and it's because there's no media. Yesterday, Major Garrett stood up to him and asked him a question, a real question, the type that a human being wants an answer to, and he went ballistic. They had to control the president, in mid-sentence, they told him what to say. You could hear, I heard the sound bite. His handlers told him how to control himself. And uh, the rest is history. Then they attacked Major Garrett. All the little men, the Lilliputians. All the little men like Wolfie Little Blitzer, the Barker. The Chihuahua on CNN. Wolfie Blitzer attacked Major Garrett for being a real newsman. And so that's the world we live in. The government media complex at work. Four Marines killed. They won't identify the gunman. We're sitting here with our, well, I don't know what you're feeling, maybe nothing. You remember I was the first in radio to talk about the sale of baby organs when the story broke on Monday, remember? And that was 
picked up by others and run with it all week, and they should run with it. I didn't, I didn't break the story. I talked up the story before anyone else. You remember I told you I had one of the worst days of my life seeing those pictures of those infants being mutilated by the abortionists and Planned Parenthood, the Nazis of our time? The Nazis of our time are not skinheads. The real Nazis of our time are in groups like Planned Parenthood who kill the most defenseless of us, the unborn, and then sell their body parts, which is something even Hitler didn't do. Even Hitler didn't sell the body, body organs. Did you know that? Can you believe this? That you're living in a nation that permits the sale of the organs of dead infants, dead fetuses, dead embryos, any, any way you want to put it. See, they believe in late-term abortion. Now, what is late-term abortion? That means euthanasia of any age group. And now you can tie that together with other laws that they're putting in place, and you'll see where this is going. Who did the shooting? No description. No news description. Two military facilities attacked in a time of terror, and the media is silent. They're obsessed with protecting the president. The media has only one job, which is to protect the president of the United States of America. They are now an extension of the White House. They're no longer representing the people. They haven't represented the people for a very long time. And we're supposed to be focused on... Uh, i, I got to be careful what I say now because it's become so acceptable. This Jenner creature, am I allowed to say this Jenner creature? The Jenner creature gets a, a hero award? Can you believe this? Not a Marine who lost legs in Afghanistan? A courage award is given to a person who mutilates himself in order to attract attention? The man has such an ego mania that he mutilates his body to stay in the spotlight. He gets a Heroes Award, a Courage Award, while men who've come back in coffins or without limbs are ignored by the vermin in the media. Does it get worse? Oh, yes, much worse. Hang on for the ride, because the roller coaster's just begun. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. I may describe their youth and their childhood. Uh, these, are, these are young people who made mistakes your that aren't that different than the mistakes. Your president, the first, the mistakes. stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, please, please. Here is your president, here is your president inside a prison, the first American president in history, to go inside a prison to make the case for prisoners the day that Someone shot up two uh, Marine recruiting centers and killed four Marines. We don't know who it is. We have no way to know it. They're covering it up, trying to get the story together. They're running through the scenarios of how to break the news of who did it. I don't know if it was a white guy, black guy. I have no idea. But you know that they're spinning the story. They got all the bright girls of the type that worked for Planned Parenthood to tell you that the sale of the organs of uh, fetuses is a humanitarian act. To try to figure out how to spin this one so that the gullible American will buy it and permit the Marxist Islamist takeover to continue unabated. If you care to comment on any of this, go ahead, 8, 855 407 I don't have any information that you don't have. Many of you are news freaks, as we all are today. And there's no news. There is a cordon sanitaire around this story of who did the shooting and the killing of the four Marines. They are working out their storyline. Two military facilities attacked, four Marines dead, will not identify the gunman. No exposure. Nothing. No exposure whatsoever. And as I played for you earlier, a soundbite from Susan Rice, she says that the United States will not have any inspectors on the ground in Iran to make sure they're complying with the so-called deal that Kerry, the traitor, uh, sold uh, us down the river with. No Americans will be permitted in Iran to make sure they're complying with it. No wonder the Iranians were laughing. Wouldn't you laugh too if you got everything and you gave up nothing in a business deal? Isn't that a great deal? Huh? That's the art of the deal from the Iranian side. We got everything. The morons in America got nothing. Let me take some calls. We're waiting for the news. 
They have to run it through the girls, the girls department, the, the PR department, the sorority that runs America. Uh, let's see, it's 1230 on the West Coast, 334, they should be back from lunch. Uh, is the sorority back from lunch yet? Do they even know what happened? In, where is the sorority? <clears throat> or they went home for the summer? Where are they? They have to call them back from Martha's Vineyard where they're doing an advance, uh, an advance tour to make sure everything's right for the first family. They have to lick the ice cream, taste the donuts, test the bicycles. Okay, my friends, it's your turn. VNN Radio. Rhett, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hi. I uh, thought the last couple weeks were bad, but this week takes the cake. I am absolutely furious that the liberals have their grubby hands so deep into our media and so deep into our investigative bureaus that they are right now, as we speak, engineering the story that they're going to give out to the public. And it angers me that my millennial peers can't see what is going on. What's going well, on? Well, you see, Rhett, you, your, problem is, your problem is really that you listen to talk radio where it's nothing but a bunch of hooey. The, the real truth tellers can be found on late night comedy shows uh, or on ABC, CBS, or NBC, or CNN. That's where the real truth comes from, or from Obama giving a speech in the middle of the night in the White House press room where he pre-records a message. I mean, I only give you hooey. He gives you the real McCoy. I mean, absolutely. I mean, John Stewart should be an idol, and Bill Maher should be an idol to all... Uh, well, Bill Maher is, is perhaps the worst American in the history of the media, the, the lowest he, he himself donated a million dollars to Obama's campaign. What more do you need to know? He works for Obama, in other words. Bill Stewart, whatever his name is, whatever his real name is, I don't know who he is, that character, the man who could not run his show when the comedy writers went on strike, remember? Martha Stewart's illegitimate son. What's his name? John Stewart? Right, isn't that Martha Stewart's illegitimate son from the time she was in prison? I don't know. But the thing is, John Stewart went off the air during the com the writer's strike because he couldn't do a show without a script. That's all. So uh, who, who do you think? You want to start guessing who the shooter was? We'll be wrong, no matter which way we guess it. Why are they covering it up so fast? Probably because they know it's just going to look off. Like, it doesn't go with the agenda that Obama and Michelle Obama are. Well, what I want to know is this. Uh, I want to know where the Department of Homeland Security is. I want to know where the FBI is. Why did they let this happen? Why couldn't they prevent? They can't prevent Jack. They're in it only for the pensions and for the guns. They like the power trip. They like marching around with a gun to terrorize everyone in their own neighborhood. But as far as defending us, the border with Mexico is porous. Are they helping Donald Trump? protect himself and his family from the drug cartel that threatened his life? I don't know. I think they probably turned him down. My guess is he's not one of their team. I wouldn't know. U.S. attorney in Tennessee says the feds are going to de determine whether this was domestic terrorism. Let's hear the sound bite. They're going to determine. What does that mean, determine? What are they going to determine? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. We are conducting this as a, an act of domestic terrorism. The FBI is now in charge of this investigation, uh -huh. and I will turn over when I get through to the special agent in charge, Ed Reinhold, to discuss with you what he can and what he will about this uh -huh. ongoing investigation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, the, I have the FBI's in charge. And that all right, turn it off now. All right, that's all. the FBI. That's the same FBI that still hasn't found what happened to the Solyndra stolen money. Remember shortly after the Solyndra, the fake solar company, went bankrupt and $500 million in loans was gone? Then very next day, the FBI broke into their office and, st and took the records. And I said, oh, there's only one reason the FBI is getting the records, is to make sure that no local police get them and actually find out who stole the money. Have you found out who got the Solyndra money now that Obama's FBI has been on the case for what now, five years? Do you have an answer as to why the Muslim major, Nadal Hassan, who committed uh, the murders at Fort Hood is still living. Can you tell me why he hasn't been executed while Timothy McVeigh was executed within, what, a few years? Any answer to that? Why is the Muslim major being protected by the Obama administration? Why? Let me go to the next caller, Richard on WABC, line eight. This is a terrible day in American history. Four heroic young men, four Marines, killed on domestic soil because they were disarmed by a liberal president 
many, many, many presidents ago. They had no way to fight back. And a gunman, undescribed, comes in with heavy weapons and blasts him and kills him. And guess who killed the gunman? A local cop. Because the cop was armed. Isn't that odd? Now, of course, Obama has work yet to do. He has to disarm the local police. He's got to make sure that only federal police exist on the order of the sterling police in Mexico, the federales. You know how, how honest they are. When Obama gets through, there'll be no local police departments. They'll all be part of the federales, reporting only to the sorority. Richard, go ahead, ABC, make your case. I'm retired NYPD, um, and uh, I'm happy to be African-American, 52 years old, and... I'm not being fooled by this administration. There are so many traitors in Washington right now. I'm waiting and hoping for at least five or ten million Americans to march on Washington. This country is going down. It's like Humpty Dumpty. We're not going to be able to put it back together again. Yeah, right. The problem is it was Humpty who couldn't put himself back together again. But Humpty in the White House is breaking... America, which will not be able to be put back together again. It's not Humpty who's breaking. It's the America that is breaking. Dr. Savage, I'm in uh, Jamaica, Queens, New York. I'm across the street from a park, and I'm watching these little kids play. And I say to myself, what is their future going to be? You know, you and I could be blood brothers because I look at kids today, and I shake inside. I look at little kids, white or black, and I see them playing innocently, and I say... What America is going to be here in 20 years if they're flooding America with Isl illegal aliens and Islamic people who will never adapt to America? Never, 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 never. Never. They will never become Americans. Never. With domestic, with our own politicians, by illegal aliens. It's... We're being, we're being attacked on several different uh, fronts here. You know, I, uh, I have a soundbite for you, Richard. Listen to this. A mayor of Kansas City gave a speech boasting that our white population has plummeted in the last few years, and he gave it before the socialist group La Raza, the Hispanic supremacist organization, and he was proud that the white and black populations have been reduced in uh, Kansas City and have been replaced by people from countries around the world. As an African-American, do you see what's going on to your own people? I totally see it. Unfortunately, I'm probably a minority within the minority. Uh, unfortunately, uh, African-American community have embraced these liberal values that have been destroying us. It's been destroying us with the crime, with the broken families. I see what's going on, but... Um, unfortunately, uh, there's not many. Uh, there's not many of us that see. By the way, which par can you tell me which park you're observing? Because I grew up in in that area of New York. I'm very. It's not. It's not Cunningham Park, is it? Boulevard. There's a park on uh, Suffren and Rockaway in Jamaica, Queens. Oh, oh, you're in South. You're in South uh, Jamaica. I get it. Yeah, I grew up in the Bronx, went to Cardinal Cardinal Hayes High School in the Grand Concourse. I actually taught in 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 uh, South Jamaica. When I was a young graduate of college, I taught in an all, well, it was an all black school at the time. I was one of the only white teachers. All of my students were black. I got along because I knew how to teach and they were interested in learning. And I've told the story many times and I've seen the country degenerate ever since that period of time. And I, I tell you the truth, I think the races got along better in the 60s than they do now. Would you say that there's more enmity between the races today than there was 20 years ago? Absolutely. It's terrible right now. It's horrible. It's horrible. No, as a, as a, as a patrolman who has to wa walk the streets, what do you see? I mean, what do you see? You see what? Young people who have no respect for authority, the police who have been deballed by Mayor de Blasio, undermined by the administration, undermined by that, that rat, that street rat, Al Sharpton. How can you feel good about this situation? Well, there's a pattern. Every liberal city is going down the tubes, including New York. It's a pattern that everybody could see, but uh, nobody wants to do anything about it. I'm a retired police officer. I talk to cops all the time. They don't want to do a thing. They don't want to do anything. Now, are Very you dangerous. retired? Are you, are you allowed to carry a weapon as a retired cop? Thank God. I mean, uh, if, they had it, if they had it their way, they'd probably take it away. They make it so difficult. But So, you know, so I, you're retired. You're sitting in a park. You're looking at kids. But you have a weapon, and if God forbid something happened, 
you could intervene, correct? Absolutely. Well, thank God that there are Absolutely. retired cops around. Thank God for that. Well, Richard, I would say enjoy the day, but my, my guts are wrenched waiting to hear who, who the shooter was uh, in uh, Tennessee who killed the four Marines, the unarmed Marines. I can say to you, uh, I don't know what to say to you on a day like today. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. And I thank you for listening to the Savage Nation today in New York City on WABC. Let's go to the other callers. 855-400-7282. Jonathan on WMAL in Washington, D.C. What have you to say about this horrendous murder in Tennessee? Yes, I'm in, the, I'm in the service, and I was wondering, do you think these four Marines were on the ISIS list put out a couple months ago of the service with men and women who are in the United States to become targets for these renegade terrorists to go out and kill? No, well, why would they? Wait, well, you're backing me up here. I mean, let's back me up here. On what list? They put out a list of who? Uh, a list of hundreds of servicemen and women in uh, in our country, so back home, and and they to as targets for these lone wolves to go kill. They put their okay, but wh why were they put on the list? What was their rationale? These these subhumans. They they put them out. So they would become targets for the lone wolves to hit. No, no, I, I, I get that. But why these people? This oh, list. Yeah. Why this list? Why were they? Why were they chosen for this list? They hacked into the servers, uh, into American servers, and got there in the list. No, but why? Saying, but how many were on the list? Four people, or four thousand, or four million? Hundreds, hundreds of servicemen. Why the hundreds, though? Why were they singled out? It's because they served in Afghanistan, and now they're back here doing recruiting? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, they, they were in Afghanistan and Iraq, and they were part Okay, so these are military... What you're saying is you don't know, but you're asking, are these four Marines who were killed, are they returned veterans of the Middle East? Isn't that what you're asking? Basically. I'm sure you will not get the answer from the United States government. We'll have to go to WikiLeaks to find out about 10 years from now. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, this just into the Savage Nation breaking news. You know about the four Marines who were executed at uh, two military recruiting bases in Tennessee. CBS News is reporting the name of the shooting suspect. His name is Mohammed Youssef Abdulaziz. Again, we identify him only from this source, Mohammed Youssef Abdulaziz. Now, we do not know the ethnic origin or the race of the shooter you'd assume by the name muhammad yusuf abdulaziz a few things you'd assume he's a muslim i would say check that box now according to obama he's not a muslim uh, real muslims only do good things bad muslims are not muslims at all i wish he had the same benevolence towards christians but we'll let that go we don't know whether his race is that of caucasian african-american Arabic, we have no idea. But we have a name, Mohammed Youssef Abdulaziz. He's the one who did the shooting. Now, who is it who disarmed our troops on military bases? Many of you don't believe it. President Clinton. That's right. Among the Clinton's first acts about taking office in 93 was to disarm U.S. soldiers on military bases. Now, why? They're afraid of a coup. They knew what they were. And the military knew who they were, the two Clintons. And look how rich they've gotten. And now she wants to be president. Ain't life grand. Thank you, John Podesta. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Four unarmed, four unarmed United States Marines were killed on our soil not too long ago by Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. Four Marines at recruiting centers executed on domestic soil while the Department of Homeland Security slept, while the FBI slept, while the intelligence agencies looked not at the enemies external and within, but at returning military veterans with crosses hanging on their neck. Four Marines dead. And while the commander-in-chief, incidentally, is at a prison in Oklahoma, not for crimes committed against America, but to have some sympathy for the devil. That's right, sympathy for the devil. He's in the prisons arguing the case of prisoners. It doesn't get any better. You're, what? You're witnessing the French Revolution in front of your own eyes. The only thing missing, missing from this revolutionary story ongoing with this character in the White House are the guillotines. There are no guillotines cutting off heads. You see, the way they do it now is they destroy you in the media. They destroy your reputation. They don't have to shoot you to kill you. They just have to destroy your reputation or make believe you don't exist. And here we are, four Marines dead. The gunman is Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. We don't know his ethnic origin or his race. You say, well, what does that matter? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't think we should look at it, actually. If we're real Americans, we should be welcoming. And uh, we should be uh, race, I guess, neutral. And just because his name is Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz, and because uh, Islam has been at war with the world for a thousand years, doesn't mean we should say he's a Muslim. Now, it's shocking that U.S. Attorney Bill Killian said officials were treating the attacks as an act of domestic terrorism. But, of course, the FBI is still investigating a motive. You know, that's going to take a few uh, days of the girls coming back from Martha's Vineyard to tell them what to say. Not a funny story. There's no fun in this. Four dead. And they were unarmed. That's right. And they say, how could Marines be killed if a guy comes in with a gun? Why didn't they shoot him dead? They had no weapons. You know who disarmed him? Bill Clinton. Check it out. Now, I, the president said that we in talk radio only deliver hooey, whatever hooey is. Uh, I would say he delivers gooey. But he says we deliver only hooey and you shouldn't believe a word we say. So don't believe me, Michael Savage, when I tell you that our military is disarmed on the bases because Bill Clinton disarmed the military on our bases. Check out the facts. Remember the Fort Hood massacre? Oh, you don't remember that? Remember that? When one man, a psychotic Muslim, Major Nidal Hassan, a psychiatrist in the army, who had signed all of his uh, medical reports with praise Allah at the bottom, and no one stopped him. This went on for years, praise Allah. Now, could you imagine if a Christian doctor signed praise Jesus on a military form? How long would he last in the military under this communist, progressive Islamist regime? Not too long. Probably before the ink dried, he'd be thrown out. For years, Nadal Hassan was signaling he was going to kill. And he did, because the military personnel were disarmed in 1993. One of Bill Clinton's first acts upon taking office in 1993 was to disarm U.S. soldiers on military bases. In March of 1993, the Army imposed regulations forbidding military personnel from carrying their personal firearms and making it impossible for commanders to issue firearms to soldiers in the United States for personal protection. Why? Because to Bill and Hillary Clinton, terrorists would face more return fire if they attacked a Texas Walmart than Nadal Hassan faced at Fort Hood, home of the heavily armed and feared first cav. And it was a civilian policewoman from off base who was the one who ended Major Nadal Hassan's rampage. Incidentally, Major Nadal Hassan is still living. He has not been executed. No, 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 he's still living. He's getting halal meals, psychiatric care, medical care, dental care, nice clean mattress. Howard on WBAP in Dallas 
You're on the Savage Nation, Howard, on this very sad day. What's on your mind? Up with this show. Line seven, please put him up on the air. If he's no, he's not there. Howard on eight, is he there? I guess he left. I'm here. Howard, go ahead, please. Yes, sir. You know, this strikes home for me. I'm a survivor of the Fort Hood shooting in 2009, and, you know, this this makes my blood boil. I mean, the same reason why I wasn't able to take Nadal Hassan out that day was exactly the reason why these Marines are dead today. And Were you, uh, in, were you in the facility while the Muslim Major Nadal Hassan executed those people? Uh, I was in the building just adjacent to it, and uh, he came out and it was firing on uh, myself and others around me uh, that day. Um and, and because you were disarmed by Bill Clinton in 1993, which was long before you were in the military, now why would you think Bill Clinton would have disarmed the military on on bases? What would be the motive for that? Uh, the only thing I can think of is control, but I, let me tell you. And I just, no, I'll, t I'll tell you why. Because Bill and Hillary Clinton feared a military coup. They knew that they were hated by police. They knew they were hated by the military, and they knew in their heart of hearts the only thing between them and total power was the military. So the first act was disarming U.S. soldiers on military bases. And can you imagine she wants to be president now? Uh, that's the most disgusting thing I, I could ever imagine. Uh, just like I had to imagine uh, a gun being in an empty holster. I actually took my handgun off that day. Uh, because I was in civilian clothes, and uh, but it's restricted, so I took it off. And that the the thought of that is disgusting, just as equally as it's disgusting to see her uh, potentially being a president of this. Year. But Howard, here we have four Marines dead in recruiting centers because they were di they were un disarmed. They had no weapons. One the 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 shooting that happened in 2014 here at Fort Hood again. Uh, Navy are shooting. The the uh, <laughs> there's been other recruiting station shootings. You know when are we going to learn? You know, when are we going to take care of... Well, we would learn if Michael Savage were president, the first act that I would perform is I'd rearm all active military on all bases. I'd make sure that they were all able to protect themselves. The second act would be to restore to the military all of the officers purged by Barack Insane St. Obama. Every officer driven out of the Corps on the false charges and smears would be reinstated with a bonus. And then I would investigate all of the fake soldiers put in management positions, and I'd fire them all. Every one of them who's been put into the military to control the military, every one of these unqualified s uh, Captain Kangaroos that they put in would be fired immediately. That's what I would do as a president. I'd love to hear this from Trump or someone else. I'd like to hear what the military uh, would say about that. Well, the, military's that right now con the military right now is concerned about... Not putting weapons in the hands of the military on domestic bases, but putting transgendered in the military. That's the highest priority. You hear this? Well, that, you know, I, I mean, it's crazy. Do you realize how crazy this country has become under the psychotic running the country and the sorority around them? Do you know how crazy they are? They're absolutely insane, and the thing that's going to—that is going to be the single thing that brings this nation down—is that what we we have uh, keep allowing our priorities. Uh, to be overrun with these uh, the facades of transgender or, or these other immoral acts, you know, those are more important than, uh, you know, us being morally sound individuals, uh, whether it's in the military or even in the, the citizen population. It's incredible. I, I don't even think the word moral ma uh, can be used anymore in America. I think the word moral itself is illegal. It's a pornographic word now, the word moral and morality. Clinton disarmed military personnel at bases in 1993. This is why uh, men and women were killed at Fort Hood, of which you are a survivor. I try to warn the world in my novel, Countdown to Mecca, what's coming in this country. And I'm going to send you a copy of that novel. If you'll stay on the line, Howard, it'll get your address. Were you injured, by the way, at Fort Hood? I was only shot at. Uh, I wasn't injured, but I was able to save uh, nine lives that day, Dr. Savage. Oh, my God. Nine lives? You saved them how? Directing them to cover uh, and just getting uh, – he was actually had headed into our building, and we were leaving, and, and I was I had to guard people with my body and everything. I'm sorry. I don't really like talking about it too much. But Okay. No, no. Sorry. It's okay. Listen, I wish I could do more for you than just send you a book, but that's all I can do right now. It's men like you who've given their lives so that we can have the freedom we have in this country. And take a look who wins a Courage Award on television last night. A man who mutilates his body because he wants to be in the news. Unbelievable to me, the world I'm living in. Stay on the line, Howard.
855-400-7282. Bob on WMAL, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hey there, Dr. Savage. Just real quick for the edification of your listeners. I've been with Homeland Security for about 13 years or so, and I just want to let you know, I mean, the, there's hundreds if not, you know, thousands of us that are just sick with uh, what our departments and what our authority has turned into over the past however many years. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't seem to understand, like, when they see why Homeland Security isn't stepping up, like in the San Francisco case, or why we're not more responsive for things. Believe me, we are doing everything we can. Oh, no, I, I met Homeland Security officers in San Francisco in a bar. I've talked to them. I won't give their names out, obviously. These are true blue Americans. They would do anything to save this country, but they're being controlled by the demons appointed by Obama. Where did this character, Jed Johnson, come from? Who is he? What is his background? Who is this man? These are all political hacks. And, I mean, you know, unfortunately what's happened is if they can't, if they can't pass laws in Congress to strip up of our, strip us of our authority, they'll just legislate by policy. They just we've seen. I can't tell you how many policy priorities they have set down through the department, uh, where they leverage the department heads to effectively keep us away from enforcing laws that we are legally charged to. Yes, no. This is the way it's done in fascist dictatorships. That's what Obama specializes in. But he's such a smooth salesman that he gets away with it. And if one reporter like Major Garrett dares ask the charlatan a real question, he is piled on by the little men in the media who don't do their jobs. You know that. Exactly. You see it. Oh, look, hey, look, let me tell you something. The world has just changed today for me and everyone else in the media. If a drug lord can challenge and threaten, rather, the lives of a presidential candidate, Donald Trump, and I'm not sure the FBI will help Donald Trump, and if Obama can attack those of us in the, the media, in the side of the media that actually criticizes, ridicules him, and get away with it, I think that our lives are not as safe as they were yesterday. And I'll leave it at that. And I'm going to send you Countdown to Mecca. And at the risk of offending my listeners who think that I shouldn't be talking about a book of mine at a time like this, let me offend your sensibilities for a few seconds because I should I should because if you think this terrorist act in Tennessee was unpredictable unpredicted you're wrong you are wrong you are very very wrong and if you think that Islamic extremists are limited to these kind of hit and miss attacks you're even more wrong and if you think this attack in Tennessee is the last attack by a domestic terrorist who is aligned with Islam, you're even more wrong. And I appeal to those of you who love your country and serve this country, who we count on to protect it, to do everything you can to override the devils that Obama has put above you to keep you from doing your job. That's all I can say, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We have more breaking news about this tragic shooting of four U.S. Marines unarmed U.S. Marines uh, at two military recruiting and training centers in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They were disarmed because Bill Clinton disarmed all military, all domestic military, upon becoming president. We know who the shooter is. His name is Mohammed Youssef Abdulaziz. And we found a website which discloses five facts about him. The website is heavy.com. I'm linking it on michaelsavage.com. Here is what we know about Abdulaziz. He was a naturalized U.S. citizen originally from Kuwait. Isn't, isn't diversity grand? Isn't that wonderful to keep bringing in people from the Middle East? In recent years, uh, we learned that Kansas City, which is no longer uh, a white population, boasts, I'm going to have the sound for you in a minute, the mayor is bragging our white population is plummeting and that the children in our schools speak 62 different languages and that the whites are now on the run in Kansas City. And he says, in recent years, our city has welcomed more refugees from other parts of the world, including Muslim Somalia. That makes sense. Afghanistan and Iraq, that makes sense. Muslims from Burma, that makes even more sense. So here's another one. A naturalized U.S. citizen originally from Kuwait. 
That makes sense. What else do we know about the 41-year-old gunman? He's from Phoenix, Arizona, whatever that means. His motive is not known, whatever that means. What do you mean his motive is not known? His motive is to kill American troops. Well, I have motive. Police have not released a motive. Well, he's dead, so they have to ask the sorority that works for Obama to say what the motive is. He did not work at the military centers. The FBI is trying to come up with a cover story as we speak. Number three, a witness said the gunman, Mohammed, fired from a Mustang outside a recruiting center in a shopping mall. A woman who worked at a restaurant next to the recruiting office on Lehigh went told CNN she saw the shooting. I looked out of our window and I seen the guy in his car, a silver Mustang drop top, a white guy, and he had a high-powered rifle and was just firing shots into the Air Force Navy Marines office. Gina Mule told CNN, I don't even know how many shots he fired, but it was a lot. After he got done opening fire, he pulled out really quick. Number four, he also opened fire at a military facility eight miles away. They're about eight miles apart. The four Marines were killed there, and Abdulaziz also died there. I guess he died from a broken heart because he couldn't kill more Marines and he failed Mohammed, I guess. What, you, what kind of reporting is this? Abdulaziz died there? What should I s put out balloons? And uh, and stuffed toys for Abdulaziz because he died after killing the former. Who writes this garbage? What do you mean Abdulaziz died there? What, he die of uh, a depression that he didn't kill more? Anyway, look, it's, you know, you can't even use sarcasm at a, at a time like this. Can't. Gunmen acted alone. And the police are not actively searching for another shooter. Well, I can say something right now, but I'll talk about enablers. There may not be another shooter, but I'll tell you who the enablers are. You want me to tell you who the enablers are of the shooting? Oh, you can make the list up yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can make up the list. Let's start with Bill Clinton, an enabler who disarmed all of our troops on military bases. That's an embarrassing fact. Now, I know the president says that we in talk radio shouldn't be listened to. We only give you hooey. He must give you gooey because I give you hooey. But it's a fact. You can't change facts unless you're a liberal for whom there are no facts. And secondly, facts don't matter. For liberals, facts don't matter. All that matters is what they want you to believe. That's called hooey. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. We have a little information about Chattanooga that I think is worth sharing, and I can't tell you that I think it's directly related. But just the other day, Muslims protested a ruling in Chattanooga. Just the other day, uh, egged on by the Council of American Islamic Conspiracies, uh, gathered across from the federal building in Chattanooga to call for justice in the charges against Robert Dogart. Muslim front groups said that the judge's decision to release from federal custody this man who planned an attack on a mosque in New York State represented a double standard and he should be revisited. They released Dogart into home detention on $30,000 bond after he agreed to plead guilty in April to plotting an attack on Islamburg. Remember Islamburg? I broke that story in the 90s on this show. A self-named Muslim community near Hancock, New York, where gun practice is a regular occurrence. Did you hear this? Council of American Islamic Relations and their spokesmouth, Abraham Hooper, said that Dogert posed a threat to Muslims and shouldn't have been released. Three days later, we have this event. Now, we're not tying the two together. Not at all. As you well know, Muslims are often victims in America of every crime imaginable. They're never perpetrators of crimes. They can't be by definition. And I am waiting for the president to declare that this is workplace violence. Somehow the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI and the Oval Office will figure out how to make this workplace security. Even though the shooter did not uh, work at the recruiting centers, they will argue that in the larger picture, because Ramadan is beginning tomorrow. Actually, Ramadan began today in the Middle East. They're a day ahead of us, aren't they? Begins uh, today uh, in the Middle East. He could have been, um, you know, I think the shooting was in honor of his religion. It's possible, isn't it? Can we assume that there's some tie into the religious holidays uh, celebrated by certain individuals? 
I, I think there are double bonus points for certain acts during holy festivals. I'm not sure of that. You know, it used to be green stamps in my day. I don't know what you get today. So I'm not going to turn this into a, you know, a, a, a joke. Four men are dead, unarmed, disarmed by Clinton, 1993. And we have to go back to the bigger connected story. And it is connected. I'm pretty sure this is connected to Iran. It's interesting again. Again, let's, let's have a conspiracy moment together. Let's put on our uh, aluminum foil hats. Everyone get out your aluminum foil hat now, all of you right-wing nuts. Put on your aluminum foil hat because I'm putting mine on. And I'm now tuning in. And we're going to have a conspiracy idea now. What happened just yesterday and the day before to have set the world on fire? The con man in chief gave Iran the ability, let's say a fast track to a nuclear bomb, and got nothing in exchange. And, and as I disclosed to you today, Susan Rice, whoever she is, I forget, disclose that no Americans will be part of the inspection teams allowed into Iran, which I thought was a shocker, a shocker. Then Obama goes on an assault and says, talk radio doesn't tell the truth. Listen to clip nine before I continue my monologue. Nine. Listen That's to the tradition. con man. It's not Democratic or Republican. It is the American tradition. And we forget Real. that sometimes because we're so caught up in our day-to-day -day politics. Are you kidding? And we listen to a bunch of hooey on TV or talk radio that doesn't really tell the truth about what's going on. See, he reverts to the accent. And you listen very carefully if you work for the CIA, as I didn't. You can hear him revert to that accent when he goes into the biggest lies. I mean, when does Obama lie? When he opens his mouth in the morning. When does he lie more? When he goes into that accent. Just, just check it out. Go backwards. I want a military, I want a domestic military just as strong, just as powerful, just as well funded as the U.S. military. Same voice. See, when he tells a real whopper, he goes into that one. So he says that we in talk radio give you hooey. And the real truth can be had from uh, Dan Rather. Or uh, whatever the other one is. I got to go again, the neighbor. Williams. I can't remember his name. Williams. So he announces the commutations of 46 drug dealers. He goes to a prison today and talks with the utmost uh, uh, respect for prisoners as they're all victims now. He's like in the Bastille. He wants to open the Bastille. I mean, it was Bastille Day two days ago for the French. So short of opening up all the prisons and flooding America with prisoners behind bars, which he couldn't get away with, instead he floods America with illegal aliens, amongst whom are prisoners from their own country. Let's put it to you that way. We're not going to repeat Trump's statement, which he didn't make. Oh, but he opens up the border. So how many of them are criminals? We don't know. Why would you assume all of them are not criminals? We have to assume some of them have escaped prison or on the lam, and they've, they've come to America to ply their trade. Wouldn't you make that assumption if you were a smart man? Of course you would. So that's what he does. Instead of opening the prisons, he opens the border. That's all. Same thing. To a certain extent. Finish the paragraph. And don't uh, quote me and say that I said everyone who comes here escaped the prison. Because I didn't say that. So talk radio doesn't tell the truth. Yet we learn that Susan Rice herself said that no Americans will be part of the IAEA inspection teams. So let's have a conspiracy moment. Are, you, are your aluminum hats in place? Robert, is yours on? Jim, do you have your aluminum hat on? Yes, they're saying yes. My, my team in Dallas says that their aluminum hat is on. We're going to have a conspiracy moment. A day after the world comes to understand Obama sold the West down the river with his sellout to Iran, giving them the right to develop a nuclear weapon. The day later, a day later, a Kuwaiti, man, American citizen, Kuwaiti, nevertheless, opens fire on a Marine base. Four men dead. Ab Yusuf Abdulaziz, Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz shoots the, the uh, recruiting bases up. So where's the conspiracy? I don't know. I don't know. It's a coincidence, isn't it? Because you forgot Iran already. It's off the pages. So many people think that they actually have a lot of these nuts under control. They're under surveillance. They're watching them. And they kind of give them a little trigger job along the lines of Manchurian Candidate. Something loose like that. Now you can take off your aluminum hats. And we'll put aside our conspiracy moment on the Savage Nation and go back to the regular hooey that we specialize here, uh, specialize in at the Savage Nation. We give you who we all day long. And I'm proud of the fact 
that we give you who we because if it's the opposite of what Obama says, then who we must be the truth. You listen to a bunch of hooey on TV and talk radio, man, that ought to be the title of my next book, Hooey. Hooray for Hooey. Hooray for Hooey. <laughs> Hooray for Hooey. Okay. I got to go back to the big story of him announcing the commutations of 46 prisoners, freeing them, throwing them onto the streets. And uh, we have to go back to Susan Rice. And you got to listen to clip seven. This is the hooey that we specialize in on the Savage Nation, the stuff that Obama doesn't want you to hear. Listen to seven. The uh, IAEA, which is a highly respected international organization, will field an international team of inspectors. Uh, and those inspectors will, in all likelihood, come from IAEA member states, most of whom have diplomatic relations with Iran. We, of course, are a rare exception. No Americans will be part of the IAEA inspection team. They're not going to be independent American inspectors separate from the IAEA. The IAEA will be doing inspect the inspections on behalf of the United States and the rest of the international community. So in other words, he gave them a deal, and he said he's going to monitor them closely, and if they violate the deal immediately, this happens, that happens. What a lying sack of garbage. How in the world can he get away with it? answer because if a reporter stands up to him the reporters attacked by the Lilliputians they peck him to death look what they did to Major Garrett look what the little men and women in the media did to Major Garrett Major Garrett is an American obviously who had enough of this liar had enough of the sellout of America and he stood up to this president and asked him a real question so the Lilliputians in the media attacked Major Garrett for being disrespectful to the president how in the world can you say he was being disrespectful by asking a question all he did was say, how could you do a deal and leave four hostages behind, Mr. President? Is that disrespectful? What, it made him uncomfortable? That's disrespectful? Well, and maybe if all of the press was as disrespectful, we could save America. Just maybe. Okay, but that's a moot point. The real point is, is that the gunman, the gunman, the, the Muslim gunman is, uh, is uh, Yusuf, uh, Muhammad Yusuf Abdulazar. And I'm sure that the uh, DHS is spinning it as workplace violence. I'm sure they'll figure it out. That it was workplace violence somehow. It, they'll figure it out that he was rejected. He didn't get it, accepted. They went there and they said no. They said you're not a U.S. citizen. or you are. You're from Kuwait. You don't have the sympathies we need. And they threw him out. So he came back angry. And it was, it's, it's really workplace violence because he's an oppressed minority. And uh, if only the Marines were not so white predominantly so white, I mean, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Look, let's face it, if the Marines were more diverse, if they had more transgendered, for example, I don't know, maybe this would have, could have been averted or avoided. A Muslim transgendered, if the Marines were run by a Muslim transgender, do you think this would have happened? No, because it would have been a more tolerant Marine, Marine Corps. You can't have such a restrictive Marine Corps. It's just embarrassingly uh, tilted in one direction. Okay, I, I've gone as far as I can in my Swiftian moment. Now let's move on to the mayor of Kansas City. If more news comes out, I will give it to you. You have to listen to this. Oh, we don't have sound? Do we have the, the mayor talking? I know you got it for me. I don't know where I lost it. It was in a, a supplemental log. I don't have it. Well, here it is. Okay, 26 to 29. The mayor of Kansas City, Kansas, in an address to the radical communist organization National Council of La Raza, which is a brown supremacist group, bragged that his city is no longer majority white and the city schools now have students who speak 62 different languages. I want you to listen to this twisted, psychotic speaking on the Savage Nation. But Kansas City, Kansas is very proud of the work of NCLR. Kansas City, Kansas is a city with no ethnic majority. Kansas City, Kansas is 40% white, 28% Latino, and 26% African American. Our school district speaks 62 different languages by the children every single day. Isn't that great? And Kansas City, Kansas has a, pri a proud heritage of welcoming all people into the community, people who are not welcome in other places. Mm-hmm. So he's boasting that the white population plummeted since Obama became president. In 2010 U.S. Census reports, Kansas City, Kansas was 52% white, and now as a result of the war against whites and flooding the city with illegal aliens from the Middle East and from south of the border, 
it's 40 percent white. So they have a lot of work left to do. That's what Obama means, that there's a lot of work left to do before he leaves office. And he's going to continue after he leaves office. I mean, 40 percent is a very high amount. Since the city's 40 percent white, 28 percent Latino, 26 percent African-American, uh, he's got a lot of work left to do, that mayor. And I think he's got to work very hard to make sure that the 40 percent is reduced to, I don't know, zero or four percent. Let's say like I, I think it should be like none fat dairy. Maybe an acceptable number would be two percent. Two percent white would work for this uh, progressive Islamist in uh, Kansas City, Kansas, don't you think? OK, let's move on. KBOI, Patrick, you're on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, I was a Marine Corps recruiter in Washington State from 2006 to 2009. I was a combat veteran. I made sure that every one of my recruiters could defend themselves. For fear of court martial, we all had our concealed weapons. Of course, we never took them into schools, but we had them in our office. And I am so sickened, and I am so hurt, and I'm so... Well, because the military is being purged by Barack Obama, who hates the military. He has purged the military, as you well know, of combat commanders and replaced them with, with kangaroo, kangaroo court types. Let me tell you what, Dr. Savage. I retired early on what they call temporary early retirement. I took a 17-year retirement. I got my pension, and I'm set. But they let me out three years early, and they let out a lot of good Marines three years early. Well, that's what Obama wants. He wants to, rep he wants to replace you with less patriotic Marines. We know what he's doing. In Stalin's, in Stalin's time, he shot the generals. In Obama's time, what they do is smear the generals and dismiss them. And then they make it so uncomfortable for the real men like you that you retire early. I know what he's doing. Yes, sir. I don't regret my service one bit. I love being a Marine, but this is, this is ridiculous. There's only, one, there's only one bit of good news with the purge of the military by Obama, and I said it last week, and I wasn't kidding. It means that there are hundreds of thousands of men like you who are highly trained in combat situations who are now part of America and will be available should, God forbid, the worst happen in this country. You will have no one to, to stop you uh, from organizing groups to defend this nation from within. And I stand by those words. I am terrified of what's coming in the, in the months, in the year and a half left of this monster's reign, reign of terror. If you see him giving away to Iran the ability to build a nuclear weapon, and the next day he goes to a prison, and the next day he goes, he, he doesn't stop. He's, he's relentless in his desire to destroy everything decent in this country. And I stand by those words, and I don't think that's hooey. And I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. We have more information on the murderer, the Muslim murderer, Muhammad. Uh, he's an immigrant from Kuwait. He was naturalized. And that means he was accepted by the U.S. government for citizenship. We have a flashback, a plea from immigration caseworkers who said, quote, we are letting terrorists into the United States right through the front door. You can find that on CNSNews.com going back to September 14th. If you want to go back to January 15th on the National Review, you will see what Obama is doing. 100,000 Muslim immigrants a year that we know of. If you want to go to Breitbart.com from 715, Muslim refugee in Idaho planned suicide bomb and trained others. What sane nation on earth would commit suicide like this? The answer is it's not the nation that's insane. We have an insane demonic president. I stand by the words, and I don't care if I'm the last man screaming it in the United States of America. I don't care if they take me off the air. I believe that the president is psychotic. I believe he's exhibiting all signs of psychosis. I can, I can spell it out for you five in a row. Classic psychosis. The behavior is that of a, let's say, sociopath. Maybe that'll work for you. There's a sociopath. He is like the pilot in that German airliner who locked himself into the cockpit and is driving the airplane into a mountaintop. And no matter what we, the passengers, say or do, his eyes are ablaze with the glory of destruction. Have a nice night. For the rest of you, I'll be back in a minute.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Again, we have breaking news on the Savage Nation. The man who executed four unarmed Marines in Chattanooga has been ID'd as Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. That's right, originally from Kuwait, but a naturalized American citizen as part of our open arms policy. The gunman who opened fire on two Chattanooga, Tennessee Navy training centers and killed four Marines is being called a possible act of domestic terrorism by our doofuses in the DHS, FBI, LSMFT. But we know his name, it's Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz, according to a law enforcement source. And what else can we say about it? As this goes on, Obama is visiting, or has visited, a federal prison to talk sympathetically about those behind bars for selling drugs and committing other felonies. Meanwhile, an ISIS rocket has claimed an attack on an Egyptian Navy ship. Meanwhile, 100 militants were killed. Iraqi coalition has gained by killing 100 of the subhumans in ISIS. Oh, there are many other stories on the Savage Nation. And if you care to comment on any of them, uh, that means you're as upset as I am. 855-407-282 is the phone number. We learned today from Susan Rice that the Iranians were given everything and we got nothing in exchange. That is, unless you're Obama, which means he got everything in exchange, which is he gave Iran the ability to develop a nuclear weapon. So you could argue he got everything he wanted because of the lack of any, any, any oversight by the uh, government media complex. So Susan Rice says we can expect Iran to spend some of the new money they're going to get on acts of terror. Listen to her boasting about it to show you how upside down things are in clip one. Listen to it. It's unbelievable. It is possible, and in fact, we should expect that some portion of that money would go to the Iranian military and could potentially be used for the kinds of bad behavior uh, that we have seen in the region uh, up until now. Can you believe this woman is in such a high position with that voice? You know that she's stupid. You know that she's just stupid. You know, Trump said that we have stupid leaders. That's an understatement. We have morons as leaders. This woman couldn't teach a seventh grade class in civics in my day and age. Here she is. Oh, yeah. Some of the money Iran will get will be spent for the Iranian military and could potentially use for bad behavior. You hear the words for, for terrorism now? Bad behavior. Hey, Susan, what would you call the shooting in Chattanooga? Would you say that's bad behavior by a Muslim? What is that behavior? Or, or he's no longer has a religious affiliation now. It gets even worse. Listen to the clip, too. You got to listen to this. The Go goal ahead, here was never... Uh, and was not designed to prevent them from engaging in bad behavior in the region. They're doing that today. The goal is to ensure that they don't have a nuclear weapon. And when they are engaging in that bad behavior, are that much more dangerous. It, what? Bad behavior? Engaging in terrorism is now bad behavior? Like a bad boy shooting spitballs? Okay, so this is what we have now. So then this moron, Susan Rice, talks to the stooge at CNN and explains what they have to do in order to continue getting the money. Listen to clip four. Jump to four, would you please? So they have to take out two-thirds of their centrifuges. They have to get rid of 98% of their uranium stockpile. They have to render inoperative their plutonium facility. They have to let the IAEA do the inspections and the interviews that are necessary to, to answer the questions that remain about Iran's past nuclear activities. Among They have to let... Uh, the IAEA in and established this 24-7 monitoring that I described. All of those steps have to be taken, and then at that point, the sanctions will be suspended, and Iran will begin to be able to access its frozen accounts around the world. That sounds good, doesn't it, to you liberals? Pay attention, though. 
Here comes the curveball that you morons don't want to hear. So in other words, they have to do all of these things, and who inspects them to find out if they're doing them? What you're about to hear is something that you cannot believe unless you understand what I've been trying to warn you, that America has been taken over by a progressive Islamic administration. Listen to clip seven and cry as you listen to what Obama gave away. The uh, IAEA, which is a highly respected international organization, will field an international team of inspectors. Uh, and those inspectors will, in all likelihood, come from IAEA member states, most of whom have diplomatic relations with Iran. We, of course, are a rare exception. No Americans will be part of the IAEA inspection team. They're not going to be independent American inspectors separate from the IAEA. The IAEA will be doing inspect the inspections on behalf of the United States and the rest of the international community. This is treason. She's treasonous. Whoever sold this deal is treasonous. The liar-in-chief has committed treason. Terrorist nations are going to inspect Iran to make sure that they're complying with the agreement? Are you people that stupid to believe that members of the IAEA will do the right thing and that we're not allowed to even send an inspector? How stupid can progressives be? I don't understand it. Are they that dumb that they would permit this to happen and not stand up finally and say, wait a minute, even we have had enough from this guy. It's clear to us that he's working for the other side. We can't tolerate this. We know Iran is a terrorist nation. We know that no one's going to hold them responsible. We can't let Iran get a nuclear weapon. It's a repeat of what was done with North Korea, which I reported on Tuesday over and over and over again. And now we wake up to even something worse. He goes to a prison. Well, I can't say something worse. Now he's in a prison selling the victimhood of the prisoners behind bars. No American president has ever been behind bars. Now some should have been behind bars, including this one, for treason. I say, what? How dare you? That's disrespectful. Why, Major Garrett, we just asked the question about why he left the four hostages behind and didn't even get them uh, released. Why, he was called disrespectful to the first African-American president. And I guess that was disrespectful to say that he's committing treason. So let me repeat it again. I believe President Barack Hussein Obama is committing treason. And I have prima facie evidence in the deal with Iran. Period. End of story. I can give you 50 other examples of the treason he's committed. Any of you who have read uh, Stop the Coming Civil War have seen it outlined in 300 pages that are referenced. Now, Obama would call it hooey. I guess the facts are considered hooey when they don't comply with his mentality. But I'll st I stand by my hooey because I reference all of the statements that I make. I don't make them up out of thin air. Okay? So now you see with your own eyes that the Iran deal is false. There is no deal. It's a green light and a fast track to an atomic bomb. And if you want Iran to have an atomic bomb, that's a good thing. If you are trepidatious about a bunch of throwback mullahs having nuclear weapons, then it's a bad thing. If you fear for the safety of American troops and America itself, then the deal with Iran is a bad thing. If you hate America and the American military, as most progressives and Islamists in America do, why, it's a good thing. And so how many people are on which side of the aisle here? I can guarantee you as I sit here that if you did an actual head count of the radical left in America and the Islamists, it would be the smallest minority you can imagine. You may think that there are a lot of them because they are overrepresented in the media. They're overrepresented in, in uh, the movie business. But they're not a majority. They're a very small minority of the American electorate, a very tiny minority of the American electorate. And this goes across all ethnic uh, groups. I can guarantee you that the majority of Americans are not progressives. I can guarantee you as I stand there, Obama represents the smallest minority of the electorate ever seen in, in America's history, ever, ever. But you wouldn't know it because the media is stocked like salmon in a fish pond with progressives who will never, ever, ever represent the, two, the true opinions of the American people. So I've made this point for many years, and I make it again, but never before have I seen it so clearly expressed than I have today with Susan Rice admitting nakedly on CNN that no Americans will be part of the inspection teams in Iran, and I rest my case. Here are some of the other headlines for the savage nation according to judicial watch michelle obama the imperious first lady took a 2014 trip to china that cost taxpayers more than three hundred sixty thousand dollars in air travel expenses alone 
The first lady and her daughters and her mother went to China in a trip highlighted by extended visits to some of the country's most popular tourist sites. Nothing is good enough for her. Now, of course, they will say it was business. It was not travel for pleasure. And they needed the mother-in-law there, of course, to, uh, I don't know for what reason, but you had to pay for her bill, too. You pay for her residency in the White House, so why not in the airplane? The White House is now calling for a humanitarian gesture from Iran regarding the detained Americans. In other words, we're begging for the mullahs, the throwback mullahs, to release the four uh, captor, the captors, captives. And we'll see what the mullahs do. They may throw them back at us, you know, after all. They're, they got to show they're nice now. Meanwhile, the psycho Nancy Pelosi is pushing the Dems to back the nuclear deal. Well, what do you expect? Meanwhile, Judicial Watch shows that 260 criminal legal alien criminals were released in Arizona in the last three weeks. But don't tell that to Donald Trump. It might prove him to be right. Meanwhile, oh, it goes on and on. Here's another one that I needed to get to you today. I, it took me a while to get to it. The director of the great movie Lone Survivor blasts Caitlyn Jenner for winning the Courage Award while disabled veterans were ignored. Good for Peter Berg. Hollywood director Peter Berg used the military theme meme to blast ESPN's decision to give Caitlyn Jenner its Arthur Ashe Courage Award. Mr. Berg directed Lone Survivor. He shared an image of a double amputee next to the Olympic athlete formerly known as Bruce Jenner. And here's what he said. One man traded two legs for the freedom of the other to trade two, I can't even read the word, for two, I can't read the word. I'll read it again. One man traded two legs for the freedom of the other to trade two blanks for two blanks. Guess which man made the cover of Vanity Fair, was praised for his courage by President O, and is to be honored with the Osher Ash Courage Award by ESPN. The Hollywood director posted on his Instagram account on Wednesday. The veteran whose image appears in the meme is Arthur Kern, Army Colonel Gregory D. Gadsen, who lost both his legs in a roadside bomb attack during Operation Iraq Freedom, the Daily Beast reported. During her ESPY's acceptance speech for Courage, Ms. Jenner spoke of her male-to-female transition in the most heroic terms. Mr. Berg's Instagram post instantly drew strong reaction, both positive and negative. One said, big fan, the thought police are coming for you now, one person wrote. Another one wrote, well, there goes any chance I had at appreciating your work, Berg. Such narrow-mindedness. You should be ashamed of yourself, wrote another. Mr. Berg is the creator of the popular NBC series Friday Night Lights. He's the currently the executive producer of the HBO series Ballers, uh, etc. Uh, I'm sure that the HBO uh, uh, network chiefs will fire him as soon as possible. He will soon be purged the way Obama has purged the military of real uh, leaders. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. We're talking about the murders in Chattanooga because the military was disarmed on our bases by Bill Clinton in 1993 and other things. Rich on KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. Mike, I listen to you every day. You're a very entertaining guy, very successful individual. All right, all right, here we go again. Right, I'm just an entertainer. Shall I get out my clown makeup now for you? Well, you are very entertaining, but when you... Yes, I know, but I only give out hooey, right? It's Obama who gives out the truth. Well, there's so many things that you say that are demonstrably untrue. Such as all right. You, well, let's start with the big picture today. Otherwise, we'll be here all day long, and I really don't want to listen to your supercilious voice for more than I have to, for longer than I have to. I proved today definitively that Iran does not have any American ex ex inspectors inspecting whether or not they comply with the deal. Doesn't that disturb you? You never, <laughs> you very rarely prove it. I asked you a question. Does that disturb you or doesn't it? Not. The things that you say disturb me not one bit, ever. Um, I just asked you a question. Does it, not me, does it disturb you that you're a liar in chief who sold us a bill of goods that Iran is going to have very detailed, stringent inspections on all of these compliance issues, really has no American inspectors? Doesn't that worry you? <laughs> you're, you're, you're on why are you giggling? Why are you giggling? What are you on, laughing gas? Why are you giggling? What, because you can't answer the question? Because suddenly you lost the chess game? Get the heck off my show, you two-bit phony you. See, every time you catch a progressive and you nail them to a cross with the truth, they start giggling or change the topic. I got to go to a commercial break because I'm very successful and my advertisers count on me.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Here's a little more hooey for those of you who think everything that talk radio reports is hooey. This comes to me from a listener in Arizona. Dear Savage, the release of criminal illegals in Arizona have all of us who have CCWs carrying everywhere. We have protection on our person everywhere we go right now because of the illegals. You see, Michael, I live in a very nice area with very expensive homes, and yet we are now having a rash of break-ins, 20-second burglaries, smash and grab, but the news mentions nothing. We just keep getting letters from the police to be careful and lock our windows and doors. That's the new America under Barack Obama. And the most important story of the day, never forget this, is that Iran has banned U.S. inspectors from all nuclear sites. Now, if you, if you want to believe that they're going to comply with the agreement, to get rid of two-thirds of their centrifuges, to get rid of 98% of the uranium stockpile, to render an operative their plutonium facility, uh, then I can tell you that you can also believe that Obama is a patriotic American who loves the country, and that Michelle Obama always loved America. You can believe it if you wish, but I happen to not believe any of that. And if you're going to have IAEA inspectors confirming whether or not they're complying, then you may as well have no inspectors because the IAEA is comprised of individuals who are very, very far left and anti-American, which is why we are not a member of the IAEA, incidentally. Anti-American, anti-American, anti-American. So anti-American inspectors are going to comply, tell us whether Iran is complying or not. Now, many of you don't care. You say, eh, let him get a bomb. I know, I know how liberals think. I understand very well the psychosis of liberalism. I understand the mental illness because I've studied it most of my adult life. And as an early uh, social worker, I was a, a social worker in my 20s. My first job out of college was that of a social worker. And I had great sympathy for the poor people. Till I found out that the poor were ripping off the city of New York when I was a welfare worker. And they were living better than I was as a college graduate. See, I slept on a mattress on the floor and I had orange crates for end tables. But I had to write a check from the taxpayers so the bums on welfare could have an actual bed and a coffee table and dressers because that's what's happening today liberalism is a mental disorder you get it stay here because i ain't going anywhere join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage that's our tradition it's not Democratic or Republican. It is the American tradition. And we forget that sometimes because we're so caught up in our day-to-day uh -huh. -day politics. <laughs> and we listen to a bunch of hooey on TV or talk radio <laughs> that doesn't really tell the truth about what's going on. Yeah, it doesn't really tell the truth like you, huh, you two-faced, double-talking liar, you? Doesn't really tell the truth? You wouldn't know the truth if it fell on your shoe. Truth. He just gave a big speech now about the shooting. Didn't mention the shooter's name. Didn't mention the religion. Didn't mention Islam. Didn't mention Ramadan. Nothing. Didn't mention the name Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. Nothing. Nothing. Just our prayers are with the families. I'm surprised he didn't call it workplace violence. I'm surprised he didn't say, well, the shooter was driving an American car. A Mustang at that. And therefore, uh, it's definitely domestic terrorism. It's sickening. The whole thing, you know, there's only so much you can take of it. We have the speech recorded. You want to try it? I don't know if I can blow it. I can handle it without blowing it. I don't know. I can't listen to him anymore. I don't know. Maybe I've, I've been at this business. I can't listen to this man. Every time this liar speaks, I blow up. I can't take him anymore. He's destroying the country from within at, at a pace that you can never believe. Now, let's listen to him now about the, the workplace shooting in Chattanooga. Go ahead. Play it. Let's, let's listen. I just received a briefing from uh, FBI Director Comey as well as my White House oh, team. Oh, hey, uh, that's about a boy. Oh, shooting brief, that took place brief. I got a brief for Chattanooga today. And we know more about it than we he don't does. We don't know yet all the details. We know. Wait, maybe we don't know the details. A Muslim opened up and killed unarmed soldiers. Gentlemen. What's Carried the details, you schmendrick? We've identified a name. 
Uh, oh, a name. What's his name? Point, Timothy McVeigh? Investigation is taking place. Oh, I turned, now I've had be. enough. Uh, that's it. I can't take it. This will be a full investigation. That's full investigation. Oh, we have a name. What's his name, President Obama? We don't know his name. We're going to have a full investigation. You know. What do you need to inspect? What do you need to investigate? What's there to investigate? Your Department of Homeland Security failed because you have a moron running it. A guy who can't even spell his own name. Ask him about the shooting in San Francisco. Didn't know the woman's name. Ask him about Chattanooga. See if Jed Johnson can spell Chattanooga. Give it to him on the spot. Excuse me, Mr. Johnson. Can you spell Chattanooga for us? We're doing a minor intelligence test. Failure. That's all. So here we are. Now, again, I have to make another point that uh, many of you out there don't know. Why were our Marines unarmed at the recruiting centers? Why were our soldiers unarmed at Fort Hood, where 13 were executed in cold blood by Muslim Major Nidal Hassan and about 56 shot in cold blood? Why was he not shot dead? Answer, because Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, one of his first acts upon becoming president in January of 1993 was to disarm all troops on all military bases in the United States of America. Why did they disarm all troops on all military bases in the United States of America and make them sitting ducks? I'll let you figure out why Bill and Hillary Clinton did this. You don't remember the early days of the Clintons? What they called the FBI agents? How uh, the daughter treated them like waiters and insulted them? You forgot all those days. Well, I've been around long enough to remember everything that they did, that we know of, by the way. And now they're back. Eight years wasn't enough. Here it comes again. The horror is back. It's like, here comes Freddie. Just when you thought the horror show was over, here comes Freddie's wife. Eight years of the horror of Bill Clinton. Now here comes Freddie's wife. Chattanooga Gunman was born in Kuwait. What does that mean, born in Kuwait? I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. He was naturalized through the very difficult citizenship process that the United States puts immigrants through. Oh, it's a very difficult process. You have to swear on your uh, holy book that you hate America and will do everything you can to undermine it. That's the new uh, citizenship test. Do you swear upon your holy book that you will do everything you can to undermine the United States of America? Yes, next. Stamp them in. That's all. The next one. That's the new citizenship test. Okay, only so far we can go with this. Let's go back to some of the great sound uh, of the day that <clears throat> my loyal staff put together for your listening disgust. And we begin again with Obama announcing the commutations of 46 prisoners the day after he announced the commutation of Iran as a terrorist state. Okay, are you ready for this? Let's, I pick one of them. I Over the last few years, a lot of people have become aware of the inequities in the criminal justice system. Oh, the sure. fact that we spend over $80 billion a year in mm -hmm. incarcerating people, oftentimes oh. who've only been engaged in nonviolent drug offenses. Now, to him, nonviolent drug offenses means drug dealing. Do you know that? He says they're not hardened criminals. Are you sure? I mean, a drug peddler is not a hardened criminal. I mean, because they didn't shoot anyone that you know of? So now he wants to release drug dealers to the streets. He commutes 46 drug dealers into the, into the streets. Then we have this, this creature, Gutierrez, who has such a slimy voice that I can hardly listen to him. Gutierrez is a front for all of the illegal aliens in uh, his district, in his uh, state of Illinois, his, his district of Illinois. And he wants the illegal aliens to convert their green cards into votes. He wants illegals to vote. I want you to listen to this man committing treason. And if we had a legitimate president, Gutierrez would be arrested immediately for telling illegal aliens to break the law. Listen to, to 17. Almost all of the immigrants in this country are going to remain in this country until the day they die. Let's be honest. So for the millions who meet the requirements of citizenship, I say take the step. Learn the language, learn our history, and how our government works and take the test. Every time you see Trump's face on your show, on your TV, vow to learn a little more English or a few more history facts so you can take the citizenship test. Let's turn the ignorance and the hatred of a TV personality running for president and turn it into something that strengthens democracy for all Americans. Turn Let's his turn I can't Trump's negative. Please turn him off, please. I, I can say something right now that cost me my job. Uh, I'll, I'll just stop right there. I, I really don't want to lose my position on radio. Slimy, slithering, uh, disgusting, 
I, other words come to mind. Slimy and slithering work for me. Gutierrez will now become uh, not a noun, but a verb. In other words, if you see someone who is slithering or committing something, uh, an act that's slimy, you say, please don't commit a Gutierrez. That's the equivalent now of slimy in the, uh, in the uh, etymological dictionary. Well, it wouldn't be etymological. I'm sorry, I have to correct myself here. I would say the, uh, the, the th thesaurus, the savage thesaurus, would now have a new word for slithering or slimy, and it would be Gutierrez. That would, that's what I would say. Not solely because he sounds like a slithering, slimy creature, but because he is a slithery, slithering, slimy creature who is encouraging illegal aliens to vote in my country. Yes, and if we had a real president, of course, Gutierrez would be inspected and investigated for this, for recommending a thing like this. Why should they vote? Why should they vote? They're not citizens. How can they vote if they're not a citizen? I know, he said, become a citizen, learn how the government works. Like, he's very clever. It was really a wink-wink moment. What he was saying is, go and vote anyway, uh, with learning nothing. I'm looking up in my thesaurus the, uh, word, the, the equivalent words for slithering or slimy, and I do not find Gutierrez in there, truthfully. I may have to stand corrected. It says, in the uh, thesaurus that I have, sluggard, no, that wouldn't apply, slithering, slimy. Let's take an easy one for the average uh, San Franciscan out there, slimy. That's something they would understand. They deal in slime on a daily basis. The slimiest city in America, San Francisco. You can't walk down the streets without slipping on human waste. So let's look at slime. And we find in the, in the dictionary, slime, sleeping, sleep together. Here, slimy. Slime, slime, slender, slime, uh, slender, fine, narrow, thin, lean. That's not, that's slim, I'm sorry, slime. Ooze, that applies to him. Gutierrez, ooze, muck, slimy, mucus, mucid, clammy. All right, it's close. All right, so don't commit a Gutierrez on me. And then we go to a really, I mean, the man is wonderful. I, I don't think he's going to make it to the White House, but Cruz is about the only politician calling for Planned Parenthood to be investigated and possibly in incarcerated for what they're doing. I want you to listen to clip 19. I know many of you in San Francisco snicker at this because to you, abortion is like drinking a glass of, of pure bottled water. You think it's a wholesome act. And you would think the selling body parts is really good because it keeps you looking young. And you could have your skin looking clear if you use embryonic tissue. Just think about the benefits of using embryonic tissue if you live in San Francisco. Listen to clip 19. Under federal law, you cannot change the method of abortion if you're trying to get tissue. In, in that tape, you see they're discussing different methods to, to capture. Mm -hmm. And so I'm calling on the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate as federal law been violated. And I'm calling on state officials in any, any location where Planned Parenthood exists for state district attorneys, state attorneys general to investigate criminal conduct. Good for him. At least he has a conscience. He's the only one who said a word about it. The only one. I could do the Caitlyn Jenner getting a, a Heroes Award, but I can't. I know that that's a career killer. I will not be able to go through that one without blowing it. I know that. Not when we have Marines and body bags and uh, soldiers without legs. I can't take it. I just can't take it on a day like today. This country is so twisted and so upside down that a main, an egomaniac like Caitlyn Jenner, whatever his name is, Bruce Jenner, to me he'll always be Bruce that a man is so desperate to stay in the public eye that he would do a thing like this to himself just to stay in the spotlight. Think about, think about that. Is that not a possibility? Is there a psychiatrist in the audience who agrees with me? Well, how could you not agree with me? What man of his age would, have you known anyone who all their life they've dreamed of becoming a tranny granny? I don't know anyone. I could see maybe if you're young and you're still good looking and your body is young and you don't really know and Let's say you want to mutilate yourself, and I try that. It's not a good life, by the way. Ask anyone who's done it to get back to you in 10 years and see if they would do it again. The answer is they would never do it again. Of course, the American Psychological Association, which is organized around twisting everyone's mind, uh, would say that it's healthy and prevents suicide. That's nonsense. You know, if a man is gay, he's gay. That's what he wants to do. He does it. That's all. But what's with the, the mutilation of the body? When has this ever been done in, in human history? When in human history has this been engaged in and yet, wait, glorified now in a nation? 
glorified, and he wins a hero award at a time like this, at a time when real men and real women put their lives on the line for us every day, whether it be on the streets of a city in a police uniform or in a military situation, and they're not heroes? Instead, this creature is now made into a hero? What does that do to our children's minds? How far can we go in the nation? How low can we sink as a society? How much lower can we go as a society? How much lower? The answer is when you have a fish that is rotting from the head down, there is no bottom to how low this country can go, and it will get much, much lower. And I don't know what it's going to take, but something is going to provoke civil unrest as sure as I'm sitting here. Remember last year I wrote a bestseller called Stop the Coming Civil War? Many of you love the book because you said, well, you're right, just leave out the word stop. I said, oh, no, that's the book, Stop the Coming Civil War. Well, I got to tell you something. I never thought we'd get as far, he'd get as far as he has with his treason. Never. I thought Iran would, would clearly blow up the presidency, especially when we learned that the United States it will not be permitted to send any inspectors to Iran. I said, that's the, the last straw. Nobody can vote for this. Even Nancy Pelosi, in her most lucid moments, when she's on triple ravioli and, and fish oils, if Nancy Pelosi ate baklava and halava and fish oils and took magnesium to get her mind functioning to that of an average 98 uh, IQ, even she would say, no, this is too far. Even I can't support this. I'll be laughed out of the court. No, I can't face my grandchildren. I can't face my grandchildren because I cannot let the terrorist nation of Iran under, uh, being controlled by Muslim fanatics get a nuclear weapon. I can't do it. But even Nancy Pelosi, even she's supporting this. Because in the slimy city of San Francisco, everything is upside down. Everything good is bad. Everything bad is good. Everything whole is broken. Everything broken is whole. And so you get the picture? All right, this is the Savage Nation. I'm Michael Savage, a champion for America's borders, language, and culture. I invite you to call the program for the last few minutes of it. Again, the big breaking news is that a Muslim from Kuwait, a so-called naturalized citizen, that's a joke, shot four Marines in Chattanooga, Tennessee at military recruiting bases. Now, I realize this is a celebratory uh, moment in San Francisco. I'm sure that there will be those drinking to this uh, in celebration. But the killer is Mohammed Youssef Abdulaziz, and uh, he executed them in cold blood because Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, disarmed all troops on all domestic bases upon taking office in 1993. Get it? There is a reason that they couldn't fire back and kill this piece of slime. They were disarmed, just as the innocent victims at Fort Hood had been disarmed and could not fire back. And so 13 died. 56 were wounded by Muslim Major Nidal Hassan, who is still living, by the way, being protected by the federal government. Why? Why couldn't they shoot that piece of slime, Major Nidal Hassan, as he was killing people and reloading and reloading? Because Bill Clinton had disarmed all active duty military on bases in 1993. See, there's cause and effect, and I shall return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, there's a picture of uh, the murderer, Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz. I guess they're calling him a white man. I, I don't know how that is. He's Kuwaiti. I guess that's the new definition of every, everybody uh, who does anything bad. Well, the, the president said they're going to investigate the motive. They immediately call it domestic terrorism. Why is it domestic if he's originally from Kuwait? How is, that, how is this domestic terrorism, shooting four on our Marines? How is that domestic terrorism? I don't understand why, because he was a naturalized citizen? So he's a deep cover, uh, a mole, that's all. He's from Kuwait and graduated from the University of Tennessee in 2012 with a degree in engineering. You hear this? Well, he was killed by the police. I think that Obama should investigate the Chattanooga police. Because these white guys just, you know, they shoot to kill pretty quickly. 
And they, they had no reason to kill him because, look, the FBI doesn't even know his motive. We don't know why the Chattanooga police killed this poor, innocent Muslim. And I think that there should be a federal investigation. And I want Al Sharpton in the streets of Chattanooga protesting the Chattanooga white police who shot this poor Muslim. I'm sorry. 